This podcast is a member of the Place to Be Nation family. Visit us at placetobenation.com, the only place to be in your pop culture world. Everybody, welcome to uh, Place to Be Nation Sports Network 2.0. Cowboy here with John D'Amato for uh, this week in the NFL. How's it going, John? Beautiful, Cowboy. A nice rainy night. Uh, congratulations. Uh, there was a glorious victory in another sport, which uh, we won't uh, dwell on too much, but uh, congrats on that. Thank it's you. Nice and, it's Thanks. nice and quiet here in New York. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, and, you know, it's a big weight off the shoulders for us uh, for us Bostonians. It was um, – Start, start starting to have the, the ghosts of Aaron Boone and Bucky Dent there, but, but old Gary Sanchez just got under it a little bit. Thank heavens. Crumble tried to uh, give the Yankee fans some some hope there, but uh, just just unfortunately, uh, I have a feeling that it, uh, there's a couple guys that I follow on Twitter and uh, whatnot, and in a couple days, even though uh, your team won 111 games, I'm sure there'll be a couple complaints about the bullpen and David Price uh, hey. in a couple – in a couple of days. I know some guys like that. It's uh, <laughs> first first sign, you know, first sign of trouble. They're off the they're off the bandwagon. I, I kind of like. To me, it's like how's that fun? How's it fun to be a fan if you're, you know, you don't say anything when when things are good, but you don't shut the fuck up when when things turn south. I guess that's the New Englander in all of us, right, John? Yeah. Glass half empty. With a hole in the bottom. <laughs> yep, there's still, still a lot of complaints about the Pats defense uh, from certain fans. So. Oh man, I know. You know, the Indy tightened it up a little bit last week, and that was it. That was it can't stop anybody. So there, 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 there will be complaints about the defense this week, but they're going up against uh, going up against quite the offensive juggernaut. So great segue. It's, ama- it's amazing how you can raise your finger to the keyboard with five rings on it. It's, uh... They're not my rings. <laughs> I have true. worn them. You know. <laughs> any, any of our loyal listeners would like to see a picture of me where I don't have the – they, they only had three at the time, but I did wear the three, uh, the three rings uh, about seven years ago. And there's a good photo of me that I'd be happy to provide if anyone's interested. Very nice. Yeah, so it was a great week. There are a lot of um, – you know, we said coming into the week that there were a lot of uh, kind of you pick them games, important games, and week played out pretty well. So I guess the, the marquee matchup of the week, so we can talk about that, and then that'll lead us into the marquee matchup of this week. So the marquee matchup of last two weeks, clearly Jaguars in their quote-unquote best defense in the NFL going into Kansas City. And uh, the Chiefs took care of business. It wasn't as uh, quite as pretty as things have been for them. Um, their defense, their defense. I don't know if their defense played good. Their defense created a, a number of turnovers. Um, I don't know if I hang that more on on the old Blakester than I do on <laughs> credit for the Chiefs' defense. But game was over in the uh, game was over in the third quarter. Just. Bortles kept turning it over. The Chiefs got just enough done on offense. All in all, pretty impressive performance. What do you think? Yeah, the, the Jags could, could get by a couple games, but they can't uh, be a serious contender without uh, Leonard Fournette. And they, they really missed him. And unfortunately, I've, uh, I've, I've been kind of a Bortles defender, but there, were, there was nothing to defend in that game. It was everything, every criticism that he gets uh, – and all the heat that he gets was well deserved with that game. His, you know, the thing with him is that when he's on, he's as good as anybody. I mean, again, like in the playoffs last year against the Patriots, and then other against the Patriots this year. When he's when he's on, he's he's fantastic, but he's very trick or treat. Like he doesn't really have kind of average games. He's either really good or just costs them the game when there's really yeah. no, no in between. Yeah. Yeah, he, plus his, his like picks and turnovers are, are just hideous. There's like like some quarterbacks you see they they try to squeeze one in there and the defense makes a good play, but his are just absolute gifts, which which kind of adds to the heat and, and makes him look horrendous. Derek Carr quarterback school, as we call it. 
hideous interceptions. He had a hideous interception this week. But so, and I mean, having that inconsistent quarterback when you're, you know, when you're when you're rebuilding, okay. But now, I mean, they're a real contender, right? They're, I mean, they're they're a legitimate Super Bowl contender, and can't have a guy that you know isn't going to play good three games in a row because that that's what you need <laughs> is three games in a row. Yeah, well, he did hold it together in that playoff run last year, so they have that to uh, fall back on. But but they need they need four net back. Yeah, and early word. I mean, they're saying they might oh, hold him out oh, till week ten. Yeah. So let's talk about both these teams, and then from from the Chiefs' perspective, any anything new there, John, that you saw, or are just kind of more of the same? Shaky uh, defense, great offense. Now, uh, you can give that defense a little bit of credit, and and also, uh, I, I guess as the opponents rise, uh, Mahomes' magic. Uh, won't be as prevalent. Uh, he, he didn't put up uh, four or five touchdowns. As a matter of fact, he, he didn't he didn't put up any. So he ran one in, but yeah. But I mean, if you watch him, though, even I mean, nobody's going to put up good numbers usually. I mean, real like crazy numbers like that against the Jags. But he played a good game, and he's got you know he seems to rise to the level of the competition. So that brings us to to this week. They can't make, you know, not that we condone this kind of thing, but they can't make the over on this game high enough. Sunday night football, prime time. The Kansas City Chiefs in their best or second best offense in the NFL going into New England. The Patriots have actually looked like the Patriots the last couple of weeks. Um, Looking at this game a few weeks ago, looked like a walkover for Kansas City. I was dreading it as uh, as a Patriots fan, but now... I mean, this 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 has forty two forty one written all over it, and I for one can't wait. It's gonna be a, gonna be a great game. I think uh, I look forward to uh, seeing if if Belichick's magic. Uh, usually, the first time uh, he's he's up against a new quarterback, uh, his, his defense is usually reigns supreme, and he, he usually has that advantage. So uh, we'll look for that to continue. Uh, uh, or at least Pats fans will look to that continue. And uh, I like in the, uh, the Colts game when uh, it, it, it got a little uh, dicey when uh, the Colts had cut it to seven, and they just drove right down, and, uh, and they're kind of uh, saving their bullets with Josh Gordon. Uh, and, and, and he he made the kind of play that, that, on, that only a few receivers in the, in the league make to, uh, to put that game away. And, uh, and that's uh, – and that's that's a good Josh Gordon, which is which is all they've gotten so far. There there hasn't been any word about any uh, issues or drama or anything. So they they kind of keep him under wraps, and uh, and they brought him out there at, at the right time to put that game away. And that's a good sign for if you're a Pets fan. Yeah, and I mean I think he could, I think he could really bust out this week. I mean if there's a week that they need him, it's against this offense. And Hogan did not today's Thursday, by the way, folks. Uh, Hogan did not practice today. So not practicing on Thursday, good chance he's not out there Sunday night. So you could see Gordon on the field for most, you know, for the vast majority of offensive plays and against a very beatable defense. And I, I, I hear what you're saying about Belichick against, the, you know, the QB for the first time. With that said, I'm, I'm realistic. I'm just asking for one stop, Bill. You stop him once, I think we can win the game. <laughs> I think we can win the game because I don't think they can stop the Patriots. We might see a surprise, though. A lot of times that these games that are hyped up as uh, sh- shootouts, they turn into uh, into a, not defensive struggles, but like a they, they turn into a twenty four twenty type deal. So it's we'll true. See. It's true. I mean, this one really, really feels like a shootout. Like really, I mean, unless there's weather or something, which is certainly possible here in. Uh, here in old yeah, no, I think it's going to be done by uh, after tonight. But if you if you can hold them to uh, keep the touchdowns and uh, bend but don't break, turn them into a couple of field goals, that, that that team will have the advantage. The team that could do that. Yeah, it's going to be a great game. Definitely the game of the week. So I, I did mention that we were um, we were recording here on a Thursday. It's a seven forty p.m. So Thursday night football hasn't started. Thursday night football. A couple of teams that we talked about last week at length. Um, Let's talk Eagles first. So the Eagles are going to New York, and I mean, 
the way this division is, I don't know if anything's a must win, but it feels like a must win for the Eagles. Um, let's talk about them first. We we talked last week about the Vikings coming to town. We both we both thought the Vikings would put up a fight, but that the Eagles would ultimately win the game, and it was actually uh, kind of it went the other way. Minnesota went in there, punched him in the mouth, um, played a, played a very good game, and took him down. Took him down. Huge win for the Vikings. Must it was a must win for the Vikings for sure with the, with the way the uh, playoff battle is in the NFC. Another kind of disheartening loss for the Eagles, sitting now at two and three on the road in New York tonight. I guess for, first, John, is this a must win for the Eagles? No, def- definitely not. I, I don't, th- that might not be a, a must win in the, the NFC lease till uh, week 17. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 it looks like everybody is going to come down uh, to the level of competition, which, which isn't much. Uh, it's, it's a struggle in the air for the division. But uh, I, I, I was very high on the Eagles all year, but now I finally saw a few uh, – well, I'm not going to say a few chinks in the armor. I don't want to get uh, – I don't want to get uh, complaints. Uh, well, I just did say it, but uh, we could edit. We could edit that. But yeah, I finally saw a few uh, l- l- areas of vulnerability uh, on the Eagles. Uh, uh, first of all, w- w- Wentz might uh, start having the reputation that uh, if, if you knock him down, he's gonna he's gonna cough the ball up. He, he's got a lot of in his young career. He's he's got a lot of fumbles on, on his resume. That that's one, and also their secondary. Is is uh, struggling. Uh, Adam Thielen and, and Diggs just ran wild. Uh, and Cousins had a had a huge game, and uh, there there was really little resistance with the with that secondary. It shows if they don't get that that pass rush from Graham and and the boys up front, that that their uh, secondary is going to give up a lot of uh, points. And third, uh, the coach uh, Peterson, he he, uh, he botched a, a bad challenge at the end and lost a crucial timeout. Yep. Uh, it, it's hard to criticize, uh, but th- this coach is playing with house money. I mean, he went for uh, at twenty to twelve. He goes for a two, and uh, cuts the lead to, to six. Which uh, it, it, you look good. See the thing when you go for the two points and you make it, you look good. But but you you got to uh, you, you got to plan the, the, the what happens if you miss it. So it turns out he made it and and, and he, he knocked it to six, which is a weird time because they usually go by that shot and it doesn't say to go for it at that time, but. But but uh, at twenty to fourteen, if they they would have got, got a field goal, they could have cut it to a to a field goal game. So he he he's kind of playing with, with house money in general as a coach because he he's already brought did something that no eagle coach has ever done. He's he's got a friggin' statue uh, of himself outside the stadium. So he's just wheeling and dealing, and, you know, going for a Mister Fourth Down, uh, Fourth and Thirty, whatever. He, he's just going <laughs> wheel and deal. But that also could come back to bite him. Like like I said, with that challenge. Uh, He's getting a little cocky. That was a bad challenge, and, and he lost a, a crucial timeout at that time. So. Yeah, and, and I mean, I'd argue, I'm, I'm with you. The, the, the most disappointing thing about the Eagles is the, the defense. The offense actually hasn't been bad. I mean, you know, 21 is you know, not a huge number, but Wentz, Wentz looks good. He does you know, a couple of inopportune turnovers, but this defense is supposed to be right on par with the, the best defenses in the league, and it really hasn't been, right? I mean, they're... We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. But the thing is, uh, Cousins kept them on the field uh, forever. So when you keep them on the field more, you can wear down those pass rushes, and they're not as uh, dominant. He played a good game, Cousins, in, in, in a big spot. I, I give yeah, him he credit. Needed, he needed that more than just, just about anybody uh, that week. He needed that game after that Buffalo disaster. Huge win. Huge win for the Vikes. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're still breathing. <laughs> and um, the Eagles... I know we don't call it a must win, but eventually someone's going to win a few games in this division, right? I mean, it is six and ten. Six and ten isn't going to win the division, I don't think. So, you know, I think yeah, but nine and seven. Uh, it looks like a nine. It looks like the win is going to be nine and seven. So, if, so if you're two and four, I guess nine nine that. and seven. Then all you got to do is go seven and three. That's not a big. Uh, that's not a big ask. And so let's talk about the Giants. A great game, most exciting game of the weekend. Um, really brutal way to lose with an, on a 63-yard field goal. But all the talk. So before the game, you had Beckham kind of going into the media and trashing, you know, kind of calling Eli out and maybe the, the coach <laughs> as well. But coming out of the game, everything you're hearing is we came together as a team. This is exactly what we needed. And I mean, they played good. I mean, that's a, that, that's a good team on the road that they – 
I mean, they, they had the game. It was a fluke play, that you know, fluke 63-yard field goal to lose the game. Um, do you think that they turned a corner and it's brighter, brighter days ahead? Or just kind of the way the game ended, you know, you might be kind of back to square one? No, it's it's been uh, – other than the Dallas game, they've been competitive in, in all their losses. But uh, it, it's a lot of the same problems. Uh Eli, number one, of of course, uh, he had a great fourth quarter, which shows that he could still turn it on in the fourth quarter. Uh, uh, like, how many quarterbacks would would uh, you be confident with that that you could get to two TDs in the fourth quarter in Carolina versus a defense like right. that? I, lo- I look, I would look around the league. I, I see like Tannehill is down by a field goal; he couldn't even get a first down. So, I, I, I'm not. I've said it before. I'm not an Eli defender, but I'm also not. It, not as down on him that, that he's shot. He, he, when everything is right, he could still he could still do it. But then, then again, you could say that if he played better the first three quarters, that they wouldn't have been positioned. But but but, but that fourth quarter, he was magic. And the, and the problem was he scored. They scored too fast. They did. They scored too when, quick. When I left a minute, when I left a minute on the clock, I knew they were going to lose. I didn't think it would be by a, a seventy-nine yard field goal. <laughs> but, uh, but I knew I knew it was done. They, he, he was too he was too good that he scored too fast. But you can't. When you're down by six, uh, I see a lot of idiots that don't know what they're talking about, saying, "Oh, they should have stopped at the one and, uh, and scored to the that. end." Yeah, of course. When you're down by six, you got to get in when you can. So that's that's ridiculous. Yeah, and I mean, I, I, we talked about this last week, and I, I think clearly it was a point of emphasis for them. He pushed the ball downfield. To me, that was the big the big difference. I mean, you had the trick play where Beckham threw the touchdown pass. Yeah, because but... he, he had the time. So unfortunately, he can't. He can't move, so he, he's not mobile. A lot, you know, people get 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 hyped because they see these young quarterbacks in the league that they're moving around and scrambling. So, but that, that's not him, and, and that, that's really never been him. And also, a lot of these quarterbacks, you see, Garoppolo is done for the year because he uh, got fancy and then tried to move to the sideline. The, this guy on uh, Buffalo, Josh Allen, he he's not going to make it to to week eight the, the way he's diving in the middle like Superman, running for his life. So. Uh, yeah, he's not mobile, but also he, he lives to play another game. Agreed. But he, I mean, the, the thing that struck me is he was taking shot, um, shots downfield that he wasn't taking. You know, there wasn't a lot of checking it down. He threw, yeah, some, that, in, he threw some incomplete passes, which is okay because you, you're the hitting the big court, play. I guess the, uh, the, that was when the Panthers' defense was kind of gassed. Uh, that was true. not right. It was, it was a hot day, so. The, the, the Giants line got to keep that up for, for four quarters, and they can be a business. But as we see, it's uh, it's not going to happen. Does it's it, going to be a lot of check down, Charlie. The game hasn't started yet, so I'm going to get it in now. I think the uh, I think the Giants are winning this game tonight. I feel very very good about the Giants yeah. winning this you, game. You, you you put the mush on them on the season preview when you picked them to win the division. So. If they win this I, game, they probably will win the division. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I could be that confident, but I'm go I'm go, I, I'd have to go the other way. I'm, I don't see. I still the, a, a lot of thing with the Eli and the Beckham uh, drama nonsense, uh, and the and the greatness of Saquon and, and the, his home run hitting ability. Uh, what goes under the radar is their defense. It, it has not been impressive. They 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 did force a couple uh, turnovers on Cam, but they're not getting the, the sacks and, and the pass rush. I, I, I think they're they're one of, they're in the bottom five in sacks. So hopefully Olivier Vernon. Uh, will come through and play. He's playing his first game uh, tonight, and hopefully he'll give that that pass rush uh, a nice boost because they're giving up too much yardage, uh, too many points, and they're, they're not giving the Giants a chance with, with field position to have like a short, easy touchdown. And they're not turn, turning forward and over. So let's get a pick six. Let, let, let's give uh, Eli a short field. Let, let's try to make it easy on him or something. Because uh, as you see, their special teams gifted uh, Carolina that touchdown, which was huge. I think so, the weather kind of helps them tonight with the, with the Jaya going down for the season. Yeah, He's really yeah. kind of their mutter, you know. Clem, and, Clement is coming back. Uh, Clement's underrated, uh, and especially versus Giants. He, he, he's had some big games versus Giants. I, I think Clement's going to do uh, a lot of damage. He doesn't strike me as a, as a mutter, you know. as a He's more of a kind of a quick burst sort of guy. But yeah. this, and, and frankly, in, in the bad weather, the short passing game is real important and you know, if there's one thing we know Eli can do, it's the five right. yard. It's the five yard out. Check down, Charlie. Yeah, we'll see. All right, so th- that should be a good one. 
I just got one more thing about the uh, you know Apologies. about the, the the Beckham no nah, no problem the, the Beckham nonsense with the with the little wheezy interview. Uh, did you remember that time when Jerry Rice did that interview uh, trashing his teammates and uh, you know criticizing Steve Young? Do you remember that famous interview? I do, I do. I, I was no, I was no, not I was not old, I, but I do remember. No, you don't because uh, there wasn't there was it never existed. Man. He never <laughs> did it. So that's all I got to say about that. Did you say Jerry Rice? Yeah, yeah. What did he just had? He did something. It was kind of recent, right? Did he come out with a nah, he not never, trashing he, Montana or Steve Young or anything like that? But nah, he had the, some during kind the, of I'm, I'm just the point was during his um, yeah during his uh, playing career he never uh, he would never speak out or he was he was the model uh, teammate. That was the point I was trying to make. Uh, he he let his uh, play in the field do the talking. A rare that's a good uh, point. wide receiver. That's a good point. I mean, I made a fool of myself. Right there. Nah, yeah, right. you missed it. That, that's right. It, it's kind of like being on a date. The uh, the point I try to make, and they don't, they never get it. The um, I was a more I did, of an Andre Bad Moon Ryson <laughs> guy growing up. <laughs> yeah, but see, they, see, that's the problem. These uh, these diva receivers, they <laughs> they get all the attention. Uh, that that's what uh, they're, they're they're popular. That's what pe- that's what the kids like these days. Uh, I guess. Uh, the thing I'll uh, say for Beckham, I mean, I I I hate that prima donna shit too yeah. like, and i mean i really like i think the put like other guys in the nfl like the worst thing you can do is go and like have it out in the media instead of keeping it behind closed doors but the one thing i'll say for beckham is he is out i mean he bet on the field i mean it, he is he doesn't take plays off and shit you know i mean he's he he's out there going 100 percent uh, I love him he, as a player. I mean, he's a dog out there. You know, he's a uh, he's he's the kind of guy you want. I I, I feel he, like he's a winner. He's just got to you know. He wants to win. He's just uh, he's just got to figure out how to grow up and, and go about it the right way. I'm, I'm, I'm not yeah. criticizing the effort and the talent and all that. But, uh, but I think Dungey Dungey said it very well on um, Sunday before the Sunday night game that. In the interview, he talked about all the things that were wrong, but never once pointed the, the finger the, at yeah. himself at all and said, I could do this yeah. better. I could didn't. And, you know, he's still young, but not that young. And part of part of leadership is leading. Right. Yeah, of course. I mean, there was a there was a crucial uh, fourth down pass that he dropped right in his hands. And uh, that stupid play on the punt. And so, so he's not perfect either. Certainly not. Let's move on, please. Let's move on, please. I'm getting uh, my, my blood pressure is going up. <laughs> All right. So m- moving on. The other kind of marquee, I guess, I, I mean, kind of a stretch to call it a marquee game, I guess. But we were excited about Falcon Steelers. Wow. And just, just, just wow. The, 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 the Falcons uh, making my uh, Super Bowl, uh, my preseason Super Bowl pick, uh, making me look like a fool. Uh. I mean, they're unable to overcome those injuries on the defense. I mean, they're they're a sieve. They're probably uh, they, the worst. Defense you can't use in that as an NFL. excuse. That every team in the league's got injuries. You got to have you got you got you got to have backups, or you got to have a backup plan, or something. You can't use that as an excuse. Every team has injuries. Yeah, you can't just I mean, fall apart like that. At least for one week, the Steelers looked like uh, looked like the old Steelers. Connor, <laughs> Connor went nuts. Antonio Brown went nuts. Roethlisberger went nuts. The defense played pretty good. But I, I feel a lot of that, especially offensively, was kind of the level of the competition. Atlanta, Tampa Bay is playing Atlanta this week. And I'm trying to think of a matchup in recent years with two worst defenses. I mean, Tampa Bay, the last time out, made Trubisky look like, you know, Steve Young, 49ers in his prime. <laughs> And the Falcons can't stop anybody. Like, I mean, this game's – I mean, in, you know, both the offenses are decent. That's another – it's another shootout, but it's more of like a like a sad sack shootout where <laughs> – Yeah, Jameis might be a little uh, shaky coming back, like, so I, mean, I, I would lean towards the gosh. Falcons. But Jam- Jameis is uh, going to be a little Ugly rusty. Stuff. But you think the Steelers are back? I mean, this is the kind of game that could propel them to – you know, they certainly have the personnel, and they've been there before. A little bit of a slow start's not going to, uh, you know, be a huge issue for them. I did read Antonio Brown's got some more personal crap going on. The uh, uh-huh. something to do with throwing uh, throwing three foot bases out of a fourteenth floor <laughs> apartment, but uh, maybe it's the Madden curse. But I feel like it was kind of a get right game for the Steelers. Good for their confidence. 
I look for them uh, to continue uh, to, to, to find the finding their game versus the Bengals uh, this week. Uh, they they seem to have had the Bengals number uh, lately, so I look I look for that to continue. It seems it seems like they they got their mojo back. They actually made a couple stops on defense uh, in in that Atlanta game too. It's a pretty bold prediction with the Bengals. I mean, the Bengals are playing great in their home. Pittsburgh sure. kind of traditionally isn't as good on the road. Perfect is back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. That was a hell. I mean, that we could just go right right into that hell of a comeback by the Bengals. Um, it looked like uh, Mister Rosero had kind of thrown the the big mush on on the Dolphins being shitty with his with his prediction. Like he predicted they were only going to win two more games, and then boom, they're up seventeen nothing. But true to form, I guess they gave it away. But I thought I thought it was a really impressive performance by Cincy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but- the Ber- perfect uh, makes that defense uh, that much better. Uh, possibly when he when he's on and uh, he's got his head screwed on, they're possibly a top top five, top ten defense. Absolutely. And, and, they, and, and, they, and their defense kept them in the game and allowed them to come back. And uh, and you got playmakers like like AJ Green, Mixon. I thought Mixon looked great coming back off the injury. Yeah, he, he he's a he's a big plus when when, when he's healthy too. So. So they got it going. When when Dalton doesn't make those bonehead plays, they could be tough. But I, I think the Steelers' mojo on them uh, continues. Yeah, I mean that's a that's that's a big game because I mean if I mean since he's favored and if they win, I mean they're they're starting to go and run away and hide right there, you know, at five and one. So yeah, yeah. that 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 the, just like with the uh, the NFC. I don't see anybody running away for, from there. Even if Cincy wins, they they could always they they usually good for like uh like like dropping one versus uh forty nine is or something stupid or you know a game they should easily win they're usually good for that so I, I don't see anybody running away in that division. Yeah, and then speaking of that division, really good game, kind of kind of a uh, defensive struggle, but the Browns get another W. Baker Magic twelve nine. Um, it looked like they were going to get screwed again <laughs> on the uh, on the non call where they just reached out and grabbed Jarvis Landry. <laughs> I thought that was a terrible non call, but the Browns persevere. They win in overtime. Cut to Hugh Jackson. He still, you know, even though it was sudden death, told everybody to get off the field because there were two seconds left. So you had the kind of the standard Hugh Jackson moment there, but. I mean that team could legitimately be five and zero. I mean, they, are, are we are we willing to say that they're a good team? No, that definitely that 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 Raider loss. Ah, oh, man, that, that that's gonna that spot. I, that that was, that was just a. It, it, was, it was so great to see them bounce back after the because they had that they had that Raider game and the, they really got screwed in that game. Yeah, by that yeah. that reversal on the on the yeah, the but first to use credit. To, to use credit, he didn't. He didn't cry about. It. He didn't cry about it and make it an officiating thing, and uh, and they bounced right back and and got a huge division win. Their their, their defense was really impre- impressive, and uh, and and Baker uh, Baker is a playmaker. Yeah, and at least he's making things happen. You know, like I mean, they 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 spread it around a lot on offense, but he's really, you know, he's really got that it factor that you can tell he's. I mean, at least. You know, I don't know how great of an analyst this this is, but watching him, I mean, he really he feels like a winner. You know, like he's not not afraid of the moment, not afraid not afraid to lead. He's a leader, and you saw that in college too. And I mean, I really believe he's just a winner. Definitely, it's not going to show up in, in the stats. He may not be uh, your fantasy guy for your fantasy guys, but uh, he makes he makes winning plays. And definitely, he showed that in in a short time. He showed that. And they got a and they got a favorable schedule there. All right. The Chargers. You're still there, John? Ah, fuck. Lost me again. You still there, John? No, you lost me. Up, oh, I got you again. I got you again. Oh, okay, okay. I apologize, everybody, for the uh, the technical difficulties here. So we'll try to bang through this for you guys before before the computer explodes. 
I was going on the uh, about the Browns. Uh, their 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 favorable their schedule is favorable. If they get this uh, win at home as the Chargers, they they got Tampa coming up. Uh, Atlanta's on the horizon. They they got some uh, winnable games. Yeah, they get a legitimate shot at a wild card. Absolutely, I completely agree. Yeah, this division. I don't see anybody running running away. Yeah. Next up, I want to take a look at. You know, we talked Vikings, Eagle. How about Rams, Seahawks? Great game. Yeah, surprising that the the Seahawks hung in there. I was very well, surprised. one of those div- division games in Seattle is one of the toughest places to play. Um, I was surprised that the Seahawks offense played as well as it did. Um, yeah, it looks like they got a they got a running game uh, finally after after the last couple of years of non-existent. Uh, they. Their running, their running game was very impressive. Really good. With, with, Both with guys. Car- Carson, yeah, Carson and Davis. Yep, and then Wilson in this game at least was just either handing off or making big plays. Um, real gut check win for the Rams, being down, you know, having Cup and Cooks go down and yeah. not play the whole second half, um, facing some adversity on the road. I, 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 I was. These are, you know, that that that's a game that that a lot of teams lose. And I, I, I was impressed, even though they didn't, they didn't kick the Seahawks ass. Um, I think that's a game that'll help them come playoff time, kind of test the metal of the team. Oh, especially at the end. That's a big morale booster when, uh, when you can win k- keeping the ball like that on that, on that fourth down where, where, where first they looked like they were going to punt, they called timeout. And then, they, and then they just, they, they just set offensive line them. The, the game's in your hands. And, uh, they, they just they ran a quarterback sneak on that fourth and one and kept the ball. That, that's a big uh, that's a big morale booster. They, yeah, absolutely. We we should talk about that because they were punting. I mean, the punt team was in, and Carroll called timeout. Oh, okay. okay. The, Seattle called timeout and, and gave McVay a second chance to think about it. And, and yeah, and I mean, what Seattle? I mean, it was fourth and an inch. Like yeah. I don't know what the hell Carroll was thinking. I, I, I had read some analysis that said that uh, the Rams had pulled off a bunch of fake punts on them over the years, and maybe yeah. he saw something in formation he didn't like. But what a – I mean, if you were a Seahawks fan, you don't want them going for that. They just need to get an inch and the game's over, right? You want to get the ball back, even, even exactly. if it's 90 yards with no timeouts. You want to get the ball back. Exactly, and that defense was kind of gas, so it didn't look like they were going to be able to stop him. So, you know, Pete Carroll, more end of game, kind of uh, <laughs> histrionics question. We, he's not great at the end of the game. That's all. That's all I'll say. I'll try to be respectful, but real, real bonehead move. I, I mean, I think there's no way in hell they're going to fake punt there. I mean, if you're going to go for it, you just go for it. It's an inch, right? Yeah. So we have the Rams. Uh, the Rams this week looks like both of those guys are probably going to come back. Cooks is hit. The hit Cooks took look, 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 looks like it might be real bad, but it looks like they're both going to be back. Cooks and Cup. And we have the Rams going to Denver, which seemed a lot more daunting <laughs> until the Jets. Uh, until the Jets just. Um, Fully carved them up like uh, like Thanksgiving turkey. Just brutally terrible performance by the Broncos defensively. I mean, they just you know to to to, to get just get destroyed like that on the ground and through the air with big plays. I mean, this is supposed to be a good defense. I mean, I, I can admit when I'm wrong. I, I thought this was a good team, and I mean that's a that that's an ugly ugly performance. And now yes. to have to face the Rams, I think they're in big trouble. Yeah, this is another uh, one I put the mush on. I was high on the Broncos uh, up until this. And, and even last week, they bar- they gave Kansas City a good game. Everything they, they bar- wanted. Everything they, they wanted. They barely lost it. But, then they, but, but now the, they got caught in a short week going to the Jets. That when when uh, you're a West Coast team and then uh, playing that 1 o'clock game, the records uh, are, usually hor- are usually horrible. So. But, but then, if you think it's just a it's just a one game anomaly, um, look coming in, and and then now you got the Rams coming in, so now you're looking at staring at two and four, and then uh, they can't can't they got to play Kansas City again at Kansas City in a couple of weeks, so things turn quickly. 
if if Keenum would have uh, came through on that pass to Sanders, they, they would have been high coming off the beating Kansas City. But but now at at two and four, now you're looking at two and four. Maybe they'll beat Arizona three and four, but then they, then they got to go to Kansas City, and uh, now you're talking three and five where you, your season's uh, on the brink. Yeah, I mean, by laying that egg, you're essentially making this game against the Rams a must win. I mean, they're home. They're home. They played KC tough at home, so they could win the game, but I really don't yeah. see it. I mean, they, but, but, they were. But to home. repeat a. To repeat a theme, when you're uh, when you got when you're uh, got the coaching job because you were a great defensive coordinator and, yeah, and your defense t- turns in a, a stinker like that, the, the clock's ticking on uh, Vance Joseph. Oh, definitely. I mean, especially yeah. that defense with all. I mean, it's not like that. It's a bunch of no names, you know. I mean, they they, they have a bunch of bunch of pro bowlers on the defense. They really embarrassing performance. Good for the Jets. I mean, the Jets the Jets played well, but. It's like every time I looked up, the Jets were ripping off a 50-yard play. I mean, Isaiah Crowell, if they would have given Isaiah Crowell more carries, he might have broken uh, the single-game rushing record. Yeah, and the, and the Jets' defense was inspired. They had a little problem, uh, but uh, but I think uh, everything looks good enough for their defensive coordinator. He was uh, going through some health stuff, but it looks like he pulled yeah, through, and, yeah, and he true. might even be on the field Sunday, so it looks good. Good for him. That's good. So... Speaking of young quarterbacks taking unnecessary hits, did he catch the Sunday night game? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. The Texans got the win. I mean, the game, it wasn't a good game. Neither team, I don't think either team really played well. I mean, that's kind of the Cowboys thing, right, is they're, uh, they're going to either win or lose games. Yeah, 15, gotta, 12, get... 2017, yada, yada. Yeah, I guess, I, I don't know if you... You got to give the Cowboys uh, some credit for their goal line defense because they, they were they were giving up chunks of yardage, but the, when it got down inside the ten, their they, their defense really stepped up and and kept Watson out of the end zone a few times, and that kept them in the game. Agreed. And, uh, until their coach uh, kind kind of took them out of the game. <laughs> he, he, I mean, this was a battle of just bad coaches. I mean, neither one of those guys is any good. Um, Watson, I mean. I I I don't know if I've ever seen a quarterback take that many like unnecessary big hits in a game. I mean, slide or something. I mean, you miss. I mean, he's he's, you know, he's so he's so important to them. Yeah, and, a lot of them will buy the goal line though. You, you see that goal line and uh, you get greedy and uh, yeah, that that was. I mean, tough but to... he was getting blown up. You know, he's taking on he's taking on three or four guys. And, and it shouldn't be like that because because now he's got he's got three stud receivers now. This kid Cootie's coming up as a cutie as a third yeah cutie as a third <laughs> option. Uh, they already have uh, De- DeAndre Hopkins, who's a great player, and he's a great Will player, Fuller, of course. Yeah. So it, when you got weapons like that, you shouldn't you shouldn't have to rely on Watson running out there try, trying to get killed. No, I mean it's just and, and it's on Watson. I don't think that's on the coaching staff unless they just didn't teach him how to slide. I mean you got to watch a guy like. You know, a guy like Russell Wilson, the smart, Wilson, yeah. smart quarterbacks who, you know, you can get your yards rushing. You can be a threat that way, but at least, you know, you don't have to take on every defender. I mean, this is what Wentz did, right? This is what Wentz did last year. And, yeah. you know, but Watson's already missed the whole season, so. Another Hopefully. guy, too, is, uh, that, that, uh, that, that's good at avoiding, at getting yards and avoiding the contact is Bortles, actually. Once again, I hate to, uh, I know he gets shit on a lot, but but Bortles is good with that. He is too, and so is Dak. Dak Prescott is too. Right, right, right. But it's just, yeah. I mean, he can't take those kind of hits. All in all, I mean, I thought a hell of a play by Hopkins in overtime. I mean, he kind of won that game by himself. By himself. Yeah, him. but it, but it, but should it even got to that? Uh, I mean, Dallas, come on, you got the you got one of the, one of the great offensive lines, although it's not as good as in the past couple of years, and it's fourth and one. I don't so, care. Uh, you, you, that's right. We should talk about this. I don't care if you. I don't care if you have the worst offensive line in the NFL. I mean, he's essentially playing for a tie right there, right? I mean, you're inside their territory. And what was there about four minutes left? Four, yeah, four and a half well, minutes well, left. Well, you, you hope you hope to get a deep uh, kickoff and, uh, and and get them a three and out. That's your only chance. But it wasn't like their defense was 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 that time. Their defense was good around the goal line. Yeah, that's but, the but thing. They weren't, yeah, That's the thing. I mean, Houston's back. going up and down the field on them all the whole game. Yeah, What's yeah. what? What do you have a better chance of getting that one yard or stopping them? Right, you're, and you're relying on your gas defense. 
it, it's not good. And and even when your your owner uh, second guesses you, brutal. It's, it's, it's not good look. Yeah. No, I mean because it's like I mean you saw you see in overtime guys are normally more aggressive, right? Like I mean yeah, even to, you know like the Colts took a little shit for going for it on that yeah, point, right. and they're playing for the win. I mean right. that fourth and one at the other team's you know at the. 45 yard line. You should go for that in the second quarter. You know? Like. Yeah. Right, right. That, well, well, the Colts thing, it wasn't even, a, it was in their own territory and it was like a fourth and five. But that's, uh, but uh, but I see where you're coming from. It, it, it's, it, there's definitely uh, not a good look for Garrett. And, and, uh, and yeah, yeah, you hate to shit on coaches and, uh, you know, wish for their firing. But that that's uh, two coaches that'll probably be uh, doing something else this time next year. Wow. Well, O'Brien, O'Brien sure. and him. Yeah. With that said, we have Buffalo going to Houston, so Houston should pick up a W there. Though the Bills are, the Bills can be frisky, I suppose, as they were as they were this week. Well, you're speaking about co- coaches that got job security. McDermott's doing a hell of a job uh, with, with nothing. They, they they got a scrappy uh, defense uh, over there in Buffalo that that's keeping them in the in the games. And I, I, we were talking about it the, at the year whether they're they're only going to win on one or two games. So that that defense is and uh, and Allen uh, will might carry them to five six games. Yeah, it's a bad. That was a, like a bad matchup for Tennessee too because we talked about it last week. The way generally the way Tennessee is going to play games and win games is kind of keep it close. Yada yada, right? Go scoring. Yeah, th- th- that's one where that's one sometimes where they, they get away from you. That's one where Marriott has got to step up as a as a top pick that he is, and he played awful and take over. Yeah, I mean, just a really bad game from him. Yep. Hey, right, what else should we talk about here? Drew Brees, hell of a moment on Monday night, breaking the uh, breaking the all time passing record. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy, in my opinion. He's even you know strikes me as a real class act. He's been incredible for that city. Kind of lost in that was just the thumping they put on the Redskins, and since uh, you know little, little hiccups early in the season, I mean they look as good as anybody. The Saints was it the Redskins or the Washington Generals? Uh, that's what it looked like. The Washington what, Generals versus, versus the Globe Trotters. The NFC East is just such an awful state of affairs. I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I, I think they're they're in first place, right? Because they're two and two because they're the, of the bye week. But I think they're the worst team in the division, the Redskins. At least the other teams, you can see like like there's a path to them, you know, kind of turning things around and being decent. I think, you know, Alex Smith kind of looks washed up. Honestly, he, he looked terrible in that game. Um, their defense isn't any good. They really don't have any weapons on offense. I mean, it's just to me, they're just a bad team. Yeah, that's the thing. At least the other three teams have uh, some dynamic playmakers that can win a game by themselves. Uh, uh, on the skins, who, who's gonna who's gonna take over and, and take over a game and win by themselves? Uh, right, and yeah. like the kind of guy Smith is, like he can, you know, you need a better defense if you're gonna have Alex Smith and surround him with nothing. And sure. they they don't they don't have that defense, <laughs> unfortunately. Yep. But back to the Saints. I mean, they're. You know, the NFC's loaded this year because they're a good, good team. Like that's that's a yeah, team they, I would want no off, part of in the playoffs. They started off real slow and uh, they, they got lucky. They got a break in that Browns game. They they got gifted a W and, and it looks like their uh, their defensive uh, setbacks are. Uh, it looks like they figured out their the, the defensive schemes and uh, yeah, they're at least getting. They, I mean, they're, they're, their offense is so good that the defense doesn't need to be all world. They just need to be decent. Yeah, and, make a couple stops, sure. But but they could be better than decent, which they're going to need to if if you want to compete with the Rams and stuff. So they 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 have the capabilities. They have a Jordan can give them a, a good pass rush. So and Davenport, he was yeah. a beast. I mean, he he looks like they traded up for him, and people kind of questioned it, saying he was real raw. But he's the last two weeks, he's been he's been fantastic and. You know, they did this. I know the Redskins, you know, after saying all that negative stuff about the Redskins, but the defense held them down, and that, that was without Marshawn Lattimore, who's really the best player on their defense. So, yeah. impressive stuff. The Saints are on a bye week this week. The Redskins, uh, Carolina's going into Washington. You know, I know how the home road thing works, but it's tough not to like Carolina in uh, in that game. 
yeah. The, I was looking at the uh, the, the this this week uh, for the first time. I looked at the uh, point spreads because I don't want to start getting into a uh, gambles anonymous again. But uh, I noticed there was a there was a ten out of the fifteen games, so three points or less uh, spreads. So there's a lot of uh, going to be a lot of tight games this week. It's how the NFL is designed, John. Parody, parody. Now we're not we're not supposed to have these dynasties. Hasn't worked out that way in one case, but. Well, there certainly won't be one in uh, in Oakland or, or Los Angeles with the Raiders. That's for sure. Did, did you catch the? Uh, did you catch a, a team that had Marshawn Lynch in the back in the, in the backfield? Uh, he was so pissed and, off. He was uh, passed on first and goal at the one. And then that was the interception I was talking about. Yeah. Carr was just an awful, awful, awful pick. He just threw it right to. Was it Melvin Ingram? I, I forget who made the pick. I think yeah, it was Melvin yeah, hit him right, Ingram. Hit him right in the numbers. So. They're awful. They shouldn't have gotten that win against the Browns. They should be 0-5. We, yep. we, we said this coming into the year. I 100% stand behind it. Terrible, terrible team. And, I mean, Seattle, Seattle in Oakland and London. I mean, is that really the best we can do for the poor people of London? Is that game... Is that the Marshawn Lynch uh, revenge game? Is that the that's gonna be the first time he's faced Seattle since he left? Uh, it's, that's not really a revenge. He didn't really leave acrimoniously. No, he retired. Yeah. So. But in London, one o'clock Sunday. If if if, if Oakland had anything going for them whatsoever, uh, they have this. They traded uh, Seattle, up to, the, to Chicago. <laughs> they have they, they have this uh, Seattle game. They they got a bye week, and then they got Indy and San Francisco. So. If you're an optimistic Raider fan, maybe you could get to four and four. Zero oh, and three. They're going to be one and seven. That's my, my <laughs> prediction after those games. Wow. They're they're a bad team. I mean, it's just Gruden doesn't know what he's doing anymore. I mean, they're yeah. Anyway. Gruden's throwing the GM under the bus, and uh, it, it, it looks like the the beautiful disaster that it is. Yeah, I mean, to be quoted about how difficult it is to find a fucking pass rusher after you trade the best pass rusher in the whole NFL. Yeah. I mean, talk about tone deaf. Just just awful. Yeah. Vegas gets what they deserve. Uh... <laughs> it's true. Did you see um, Shad Khan put a bid on Wembley Stadium today? $785 million. Word is they're they're going to vote on it, and if if he gets it, that the Jaguars are going to move there full time. Well, well, when the Jaguars are bad, I I I think for the last couple of years they played before they got good last year. There was one year where they played every game at one o'clock on a Sunday. So are they going to play every game at nine thirty on a Sunday? Or? They're right. Bort- I mean, they've played in London a few times. Bortles' numbers in London are incredible. Yeah, he's like the Joe that's... Montana of of, of London. Because they they're, they're the only team that that gives up that's willing to give up one home game every year. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Maybe the Chargers, since they don't really have home games. <laughs> yeah, playing in a stubby field or whatever with a capacity of uh, five thousand. All right, so let's close it out, John, with uh, with some predictions for um, for oh, this boy. week. I want to make sure that we uh, we. That you catch most, if not all, of your of your Giants game here. So we already said we already talked about that one. We talked about Pittsburgh at Cincinnati. You went Pittsburgh. I like the Natty there. I just I think I feel like they're they I feel like they're a sneaky good team this year. That they're they're the real deal, and it's finally things are going to finally click for Marvin Lewis. Although once playoff time comes, I will most likely predict for them to lose in the first round, no matter who they play. Um, <laughs> one and done. Yep. <laughs> Dal- Dalton and Lewis and uh, one and done. Yep. Jacksonville at Dallas. Wow. Interesting game. Interesting game. Chances are it's going to be like 10-9. <laughs> Who do you think is going to win 10-9? I like the Cowboys at home. D- Dallas has been real tough at home this year, but uh, for some reason I, d- I just look for the uh, Jags to, uh, to bounce back and uh, – I think uh, out of all the uh, the units, their defense is the is the best unit, and uh, the, and they'll dominate. And they'll pull out a victory. I, I pondered on that one on the picks uh, for, for the longest, and uh, I'll go with I'll go with Jacksonville in a, in a road win. Yeah, and I mean I think that the, the Dallas pick 
It comes down to one thing with Dallas, and that's can they establish the running game? Because if they if they so if they get put in a situation where Prescott's passing against that defense the whole game, they're going to get killed. But I feel like at home, those linemen are going to move downhill, and you know might not be a you know Isaiah yeah, that, Crowell against the, the Broncos kind of effort. But I could see Zeke with like thirty carries for a hundred and five yards and two touchdowns, something like that. Man, I'm not. Uh, I mean, Zeke won that that Detroit game by himself, but I don't, I don't think he could do that versus a Jacksonville stout defense. All right, and then uh, well, last one game of the week. I'll let you go first. KC at the Pats. I, I think uh, I, I think Bill's gonna have uh, gonna, gonna close down the Mahomes magic show for one night, and uh, the, he's gonna hold him to a couple field goals, and the Pats are gonna do it. I like the Pats as well. Um, I, I I am not as confident as you are in, in their ability to stop the Chiefs, but I am even less confident in the Chiefs' ability to stop the Pats. So I like the Pats, say, 30, 35, 28, something like that. So you foresee that uh, there will be some Patriot fans on Twitter uh, complaining about the Pats' defense? Yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I just foresee that as soon as – Anything negative happens, that's when Pat's na- that's when Pat's nation is gonna pipe up and talk about how terrible they are. But Brady Brady could throw for four hundred and fifty yards and four touchdowns, but if he you know, if he misses an open guy or throws a pick, that's what that's what we're gonna hear about. Oh uh, boy, never satisfied. It must be tough being a, a Boston a Boston fan, you know. No, I mean no, it's not tough being a Boston fan. But we do, I, I think, just in general, people from around here, there's like an air of, and I think you probably you have a little bit of this in New York, too, which is just like kind of a, you know, black cloud sort of deal. Like nothing, uh, you know, oh, the, sure. people have trouble being happy around here, you know, so it just, it's more pronounced when, when you have the greatest dynasty in NFL history and you still, all you can do. All you can do is bitch about it, you know. Yeah, people love people love to be miserable. I don't, it's true. I don't get it. I don't get it. But we're not miserable. We're not miserable, uh, John. We're the outliers. Another great week. Another, another great, great week. week. Do you want to uh, want to plug your column? Well, every Wednesday, uh, check it out. We uh, did did a deep dive into the NFC lease this week. Uh, got some compliments on it. Uh, I stuck to that. I uh, wasn't afraid to get a little dirty, especially on on my own home team. I'm definitely not a homer, so. Check it out. Check it out, guys, every Wednesday. And then tune in um, tune in next week to This Week in the NFL. It's a pleasure, me and John. We're, this is We would just be doing this anyway, but we just happen to have microphones in front of us. So I, I hope you enjoy it as much as we enjoy doing it. And go Giants. Definitely. Thank you. Right. We, got it, we got it in before kickoff. Thanks. All right. Peace. Until next time.